everybody. Welcome back. Today is Sunday, September 16th, 2018. Mixing up a little bit of sugar water today, feeding some bees. What we've got here, been stocking up each time we go to Sam's, get these 25 pound bags. I probably only need about maybe, well, what, here's the plan. When we get into Indian summer after our first frost here, I will remove any honey supers that I'm collecting some goldenrod honey with right now and I will go ahead and feed each hive a couple gallons help them finish backfilling because after that first frost the Indian summer there's really nothing for them to collect but we still have several weeks of warm weather so I'll go through some of this um, what you do is you mix two gallons of hot water straight from the tap so two gallons of hot water mixed with a 25 pound bag of sugar and that gives you real close to what they consider a two to one mixture um, it's a pretty thick you could make it thicker but it seems to be just right in the springtime you'll want to use a uh, maybe a little bit more water down perhaps uh, 15 pounds of sugar with two gallons of water. Either way, that two gallons of water with that sugar, now we've got about four gallons in this bucket. I'm gonna use this just simple, uh, oh, I've seen people just use sticks. Well, that takes forever. If you've got any drill, about $4 of Harbor Freight gets you this little paint mixer, and it's real simple. Mix up for about a minute like that and then let it sit for a minute or so. Give it a little bit more and you're good to go. You don't need to boil the water. You don't need to get carried away. Just hot water out of the tap if it's convenient to you. If you're at some out yard somewhere and you don't pre-mix it up and uh, I've seen guys use, you know, uh, gallons, milk jugs, juice jugs, whatever, pre-mix it and take it in that way, that's fine. Whatever you got. And of course the battery died. Got a simple fix for that. Put that one on the charger, grab the new battery, back in business. sugar you use personally non GMO I like non GMO that's just a personal opinion after that sure the generic is a little cheaper but it's all good so just come along with me and we'll go out and put some of this in the feeder As you can see, the hives that have the honey boxes are colored boxes. Those are strong hives, they're doing really good. The ones that don't have the colored boxes are hives that um, were just started this year. And uh, so they've been kind of building up and they're just not quite as strong as the others.
personally I use these uh, I like these vents here they just sit on top and on the feeders there's slots cut out that the bees come up into and then go down these are from Man Lake the vents are from Kelly Bees. It seems like nobody has exactly everything that you need, which is fine. Uh, but ultimately we put it in here. We put it in by the gallon. Putting in these little quart jars is crazy. couple robber bees out and about and you can tell a robber bee I don't know if you can get a close-up on that one see how it's it's not fuzzy it's an old really old worker bee and it's uh, how it's like real slick real smooth it's been fighting so much it's old and it's been fighting uh, I don't even you know one or two of them may get trapped in there and yes they are collecting something and taking it back to whichever hive is theirs but robbers can be quite a problem if you pan over back behind, you can see we got goldenrod going just full bloom over in, there's fields all around us on in between the trees and whatnot. But it's just that simple. Come on over. Put that vent back on, put the lid on, and uh, strap it back down. We're good to go. Got a few ants, I don't really know. Ants are just, uh, some people say, just coexist with them. This orchard has been in here since I've been here for 20 years now. I have never sprayed, not even one single time. Yeah, the fruit's, the fruit's bad. I pick off some and you gotta cut around the bug holes. It's mainly for the wildlife, for the deer and whatnot. I don't even hunt deer anymore, however, it's just the, the principle that the honey that comes off of this, with the exception of that cornfield, that used to be hay field. I've never seen anybody plant corn on a hillside, but somebody's decided to try and do that. There's only good advantage about it is that in the process of growing that corn over there for a year or two, I hope and I think that their plan is to come back and follow it up with some uh, turn it into an alfalfa field or something and at that point they've killed out all of the weeds all of the the grasses and everything so they can have a clean slate but that's how we feed the bees thanks for watching